Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. Today for Mommy Monday we are discussing something that I don't think is talked about a whole heck of a lot um, and it's something that I went through, something my son went through and our family went through together and I thought I would just put this out here because again it's not something I heard of a lot. I know when we got it done there were tons and tons of people asking us questions all the time. Even if we were out in the store people would always kind of look and want to see exactly what these things were and today that is going to be talking about ear molding. Um, now just a, a background story and then I'll get into exactly what ear molding is. When my son was born he wasn't born with what I would refer to as a deformity. It was a physical feature about him but it was just the way that he had been sitting in my stomach had made his ears form a little bit differently than what is normal. So in your ears one of them was simple. All it was was it was bent down, but it was literally bent in half. Um, and obviously most people are like, oh, well, when you get down the stomach, it'll just kind of flop up. So we were thinking, oh, you know, we're not really too concerned. We're just going to watch it and see what happens. But it was literally folded in half. Like, it wasn't uncomfortable. Like, it was, like, bendable. Because obviously when they're first born, their cartilage is not hard by any means. So it was just kind of slumped over, didn't bother him, didn't affect his hearing at all. Now this one, if you'll see, let me move my hair, you have like this curvature of the ear that flips inward and right here it flipped outward and that's because right here where your um, the creases in your ear naturally go to a Y, his was missing the outer portion of the Y so it just kind of went in so therefore this was not being pulled in and it was out. So it just kind of made this ear really stick out while this one obviously stuck in from being bent over. So um, obviously after you have a child, about two or three days after you get out of the hospital, you have the first checkup in the doctor's office. And when we went, it was just something that we asked the pediatrician, you know, is it something that over time this will change? Is it something that needs to be fixed or seriously looked at? Is it going to hurt him in any way? We just had tons of questions because being first time parents as well as even if I grew up in a big family, I've never seen that. And so many people would always like, if they saw certain family members um, would come in and be like, oh, like that's why we taped the ears back in my day and different things like that. But I never really took it seriously or knew what they were talking about. A pediatrician directed us to a plastic surgeon within the area that he had actually met with before at like some medical convention or something. But um, he had heard of that does what is known as ear molding. So we didn't learn too much about the, from the pediatrician about it. Just the fact that it would hurt help his ears um, so I made an appointment we were told to make it within like the first 10 days of life because he said that in the ear molding the sooner you get it done the better because once the cartilage starts hardening you don't really have much of a choice to change whatever is going on so we made the appointment luckily we got in within the first week of his life um, so with all of his doctor's appointments I swear my son saw literally every doctor that you could think of um, including now plastic surgeon so we are on our way there I talked to the person they took a look at their ears or at his ears and um, overall what we decided was the only way that his ears would ever look normal is if we did something called an ear mold. Now before I get into that I just want to kind of throw a little thing out there. I totally understand that babies are unique and things like this are um, very, um, I want to say touchy subjects. Uh, it's something that my husband and I thought about for a very long time. Some people would have just said, you know, why didn't you just leave his ears the way they are? Like, he's unique about it. You know, no one would ever make fun of him. It's a physical thing. Don't worry about it. But in today's world, there's so many bullying and, you know, it's just ridiculous. And it's just one less thing we wanted to make. Um, we didn't want to make it hard on him physically. Like if it's something that we could fix, we wanted to fix it right then. It's just in today's world, things like that just make me so nervous. And if it's a simple fix, something that's not going to hurt him, it's not surgical, you know, why not at least consider it? So that's what we went in thinking. If it was something that was non-invasive, and we could afford it, we were going to do it. Um, but his little physical issue did not hinder him at all in hearing, so this was strictly a physical appearance thing. So we went in, talked to the plastic surgeon, and literally walked out with something that looked like 
these guys and these are ear molds um, now the first ones I do have this is actually his like bigger sized pair um, the newborn ones are downstairs in my garage already packed away and I could not find them but um, an ear mold is literally this is like silicone it's like rubbery kind of material not hard plastic at all very breathable um, this is just like it's not a band-aid it's like that sticky body tape um, kind of like a band-aid but it's just it just adheres to the skin um, and one went on each year and they both had different jobs so basically what happened is I will unsnap this if it lets me and I will show you so she would begin by um, shaving the sides of his hair right around where the mold needed to go because that tape needs to stick to the skin and hair can't get in the way and obviously my son had a ton of hair so it needed to be cut if your child doesn't have any hair you won't have anything to worry about but it had to adhere to his skin directly um, and they would go in I'm using the wrong one I'll use this ear then they would go in and kind of place this on his ear and obviously this is not going to fit my ear but it would go like this and then using these little little teeny guys she would position his ear exactly where she wanted it to using these clips and then she would hold it in place by covering it with this. Um, now a lot of people were asking me, they would stop me in stores and say like, oh I'm sure you can't hear with those or what are those or anything like that. Your child can still hear with these on. There is no hindrance uh, of that at all. He never showed any sign of discomfort. In fact, the first time that he got them on, he literally slept through it. Like that's how like comfortable he was. It was nothing like he was uncomfortable in any way, that's just not the case. Um, now there are some times where he cried, but it wasn't because it hurt, it would have been because like he was tired, or he didn't want to lay on his side, or something like that, but generally we had a very good experience with the plastic surgeon. Um, the hardest part about this was the, the time. So I'm just trying to clip this, I'm not like trying to not pay attention to you guys. So um, the time that they had to sew on was about six to eight weeks. It really just comes down to your child's body. If the cartilage hardens within six weeks you won't need anything if it takes eight weeks you know it may be a little bit longer so he had these on up until he was a little bit oh I don't know maybe he was two months because he got them on the first month of his life six weeks later it kind of takes you around two months um, he did have them on for the full six weeks and then the last week it is just tape that is all um, and that's when they feel like there's no more movement it's just kind of to um, keep the ears exactly where they need to go or stay um, while the cartilage makes its last like final hardening step um, and the tape looks exactly like the backing tape on this so it's nothing too extreme and literally it just held his ear like this versus having this entire cover um, now this I said were his biggest sizes because the other ones fit his entire ear in whereas when he got bigger it kind of let his lobe hang out um, and these would sit on we would go back once every week to two weeks depending on how long these would stay on um, when he was newborn he wasn't really fascinated with his ears so these would stay on for two weeks no issue but as soon as he was like feeling around he loved to play with his hair and he felt his ears he would rip them off all the time and one time we had to go twice in a week to have them because obviously you are paying good money for these to go on and if you have them off for a long period of time that can change it's just like if you wear braces but you don't follow it with a retainer your teeth can shift back so it's the same thing and obviously you only have a certain amount of time for that cartilage hardens so anytime that they fell off or looked loose we had to go back and get them replaced and re-adhered um, so finally after six weeks we got the all clear that he was good. If I can find any kind of like before, during, after kind of stages, I will definitely like put them somewhere here. But we saw a tremendous um, difference in his ears. This one looks completely normal and it now curves in. And this one has a little bit of a lip, maybe like that much that hangs down. But compared to the completely in half, um, it is you can't even tell the difference. Um, you can't tell he had any work done, he will never know he had work done, and completely non-invasive, and you know, it didn't do anything to his ears. It just helped them form the way they should. That's all it is. It just helped them form in a way that would make them have more of a normal appearance. Um, 
Now, I don't know the procedures for if you get there too late, but what I am saying is if you happen to have a child that has certain things like that, there are things you can do should you want to. Now, when it comes to price, it can be very, very expensive, obviously, if you're going to a plastic surgeon, but I will say our insurance happened to cover it, and when I went, that was one of our biggest things. Um, it was around two grand, I want to say, and there we did get a little bit of a break because we did both ears instead of one, and um, it went through our insurance, I think, because it was more so like a physical at birth. Um, I don't want to say deformity because just I don't want to use that word. It just is not a deformity, but it was just something of physical nature that was not caused by anything except for when he was born. It just happened to happen. So our insurance, I know, covered it. So if you have any any people that just had kids or is wondering if something like this ever exists or if you're thinking of having kids and one day this helps you I you know I just wanted to put it out there so that people know this is a thing definitely spreading the word and um, just talking a little bit more about it because I know we got so many questions when he had these molds on his ears oh and as a little tip when you have them on you're not allowed to bathe them so we literally gave him a sponge bath every night of his life and I'm telling you right now if you've ever had a cast these will start to smell like a arm that has been covered in a cast and not been able to be washed because you can't wash these or else it lifts the tape up um, so he was sponge bathed for a very 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 long time but we made it through and I'm sure he will be happy that we did it and we are very happy that we did it but like I said if this helps anyone I hope it does but just wanted to say a little bit more about it if you guys follow me on Instagram which I'll link around here um, and you look back in my pictures you will probably see a lot with his molds on they're just cute he's just a cute little button didn't pay any attention, didn't hinder sleep, nothing like that. He was a very easy baby, but never bothered him one bit. So I hope this helped someone out there. If it did, um, you're welcome. But other than that, I don't have anything for you. If you guys enjoy this video, give it a thumbs up as well as subscribe to stay tuned for more Mommy Mondays. But I hope you guys are having a terrific day, and I will see you all in my next video. Bye, guys!